Welcome everybody to Apex Watercraft's first ever video walkthrough of a whitewater kayak. Very exciting. What you're about to see is the first production whitewater boat. It's the Rebound, the medium Rebound. And that's right, it's a carbon fiber composite boat. And you're seeing it as you're gonna receive it. It's in a bag, how cool is that? Travel bag, you've got access to grab handles. It protects the boat. It's breathable, which means that if you've got water in the boat, the water will come out. However, it's not waterproof, so if you leave it right side up in the rain, water does get in. But let's take a look at what's inside. That's what we're really here for. You unzip it. You pull it out of the bag. Oh. Okay. Man, I don't even know where to start. It's so exciting. Where do we want to start? Let's just start with what's in the bag. All right, you pull your boat out of the bag and you notice you've got some stuff inside. Of course, number one, you've got your kayak. Number two, you've got some accessories. You've got a front wall, you've got a bag. Your bag's gonna be black. It's gonna have an Apex Watercraft logo on it. I'll tell you what's in that bag in a second. And you're gonna have a foot block. All right, in your bag, you are gonna have this funky looking thing. And what is this? This is your thruster. You're also gonna have some pretty awesome hip pads. These are CNC machine hip pads and some shims. We will get into that when we get into this outfitting specifically, but when you open your boat, that's what you're gonna have. All right, now we get to the exciting part of the boat. We get to the boat part of the boat. Ooh, where do we start? Uh, let's start on the bottom. First, let's just take a look this is a carbon fiber kayak. It is manufactured a very specific way. Um, the, the car, everything, a lot of things are carbon fiber. The question is how much carbon fiber, how thick, uh, what other materials are using. Um, in this particular case, it's a carbon fiber foam core. Um, it's a wet layup, meaning it's not in fusion. There's a reason for that because number one, we want it to be lighter. Number two, we want it to be stronger. Um, it has multiple layers of carbon fiber on the outside. It then has a layer of carbon uh, of foam core. It goes three millimeters throughout mu much of it, six millimeters in key areas. And then on the inside, it has carbon Kevlar and another carbon Kevlar layer. Now, there's local reinforcement. When you're banging around on a boat, you get a lot of abuse in the center area. There's additional material here. When you're banging on the bottom for loops and cartwheels and stuff, front and back, there's extra material there as well. So it's well protected from abuse. Now, of course, yes, you can break one of these boats, but for 18 pounds, this is unbelievably strong. Now, there's another side to it, of course. What about rigidity? I don't know whether you can tell or not, but there's almost zero flex. Of course, there's a little bit, but itsy bitsy bit. Let's just say, almost zero flex. Now take a look at the, of the, uh, the shine on the bottom of this thing. This is made out of an absolutely beautiful production mold. The mold is in great shape. It's perfectly shaped. It's well polished. The boat is well taken care of. Uh, the molds are well maintained. So when you get your boat, it's gonna be like a mirror. Yes, you can look, you can take a picture and get a selfie with the, with the hull like a mirror. Okay, now let's move up to the top. We'll talk about the performance of the hull later. The top, you see this, this is a seam line. It's an outside seam. It would make you assume that this is a two-part boat. This is not a two-part boat. This boat is made in one part. Literally, it's not a deck and a hull that's taped and then seamed together. When this comes out of the mold, the deck and the hull are all one piece. The way they do that is they lay the material um, in, the, in the hull, we lay the material in the deck, and we have overlap. We put the deck mold on top of the hull mold. We overlap the material on top of each other. We add an inside seam, it's bagged, and then um, the whole thing is put together under vacuum, and boom, you've got a one piece. Now because it's two molds, a, t a top and a bottom that are put together, there's a little bit of a space there, you get some flashing, you need to trim it off. And now this outside seam is one for aesthetics, and then number two, to protect the seam and to add some more strength. But as a one-piece boat, you do not see many one-piece boats out there because it's not an easy process to do. All right, um, the deck. The deck is also foam core. 
Every part of this deck has foam core inside. In order to do that, somebody has to sit there and use a pair of scissors and a knife and cut all these foam pieces to fit perfectly because the foam doesn't contour super easily. It's got a little bit of rigidity to it. So it requires a very skilled person with the patterns to make the foam fit in all these areas. But the benefit of it is every single place on this boat is bomber solid. No front wall, no back wall. This thing is like incredibly stiff throughout. All right, now the cockpit rim. Uh, had we not messed up the cockpit rim on the first try, this boat, would, we'd be doing this walkthrough like six weeks ago. However, um, we needed to do a second version of the cockpit rim. If you look, this is a flat, like basically unidimensional cockpit rim and has very little um, thickness to it. If you feel it, it feels like a wedge. It's actually kind of a neat shape. There's some, uh, there's a little bit of shape to it. For the most part, it's not a 3D rim like a plastic boat. It is a very um, thin rim. The reason for that is you get the strength you need in composite and it's lighter weight. Now the thigh brace, this is the area that, that um, I didn't design right the first time, but we now have it right. This thigh area in generation number one, if those of you who care, was a little bit too far back and a little bit too low. These are really nicely shaped, aggressive thigh braces, meaning lots of hook, but they are in the right place. It doesn't take up any extra room. If you're, if you're the right weight and height to fit in this boat, these thigh braces will allow you in the boat. But for anybody that wants control, you've got a, enough support here to provide the control you want. And they're incredibly bomber stiff. So if you wanted to add more foam or whatever to them, you can do that and they're not gonna ever move out of the way. All right, so that's your cockpit rim. That's your top and bottom. Grab handles. If you've ever seen Mad Max Fury Road, this is a Mad Max Cobra knot. He has a bracelet on in, in the movie. It looks like the one I'm wearing right here, but his was army green. But I wanted to match the boat. This is a black one. Uh, these grab handles are super cool. They're very comfortable on the hands. Paracord, they're really strong. Um, they're carbon fibered on the inside. Um, so no water gets in and they're super bomber. All right, now let's go to the inside of the boat. Let's take a look at this thing. Ooh. This is the seat. Now what is special about this seat? This seat is CNC machined. It's, uh, there's a computer file for this seat. This is generation two. And this is what I call a medium seat. Um, it provides a lot of leg lift. It provides a lot of leg lift. It provides a lot of contour all the way around. So it's a really epic bucket seat. There's no sliding around in this seat. It's amazing that way. Um, however, it's mini cell foam. There's no cloth on this seat. What happens when you put cloth on something? Well, you're done with it. You can't adjust it from there. It's locked in. Cloth also absorbs water and gets heavy. So by having no cloth on this seat, there's two advantages. It's lighter weight, wet or dry, and you can take a sure form to it and you can adjust it if you want to. And it's also easy to glue more foam onto if you need to. However, right out of the gate, it should be awesome. Number two, it's the, the entire thing is foam. So you've got a lot of thickness here in the foam, which means you've got a lot of cushion. So it's really comfortable. It's soft, it's cushy. Um, you, you don't end up with uh, pressure points. So this is what I consider the ideal seat. Now, the cool thing about it is a year from now, I can make an adjustment to the CAD file and we can keep tweaking the seat. Instead of having the same seat for five, 10 years, we can constantly make improvements. So this is generation two, like I said. I've got one for big butts, one for medium butts. We'll make one for small butts and uh, we'll be able to continue to improve this throughout. Now, how does this seat go in? Literally, it's a bit like a puzzle. You just slide it in under the thigh braces. Slide it forward, turn it, and I'll check this out. I'm gonna get on my thing. Boom. You literally just bang it into place between these two vertical foam pieces, and that's in the, it's a press fit. Now, can you glue it in? Of course you can glue it in. Some contact cement, and you glue it right into place. But you can literally adjust your seat just by sliding it forward and back in a press. It's like a tight press fit. And find the seat position that works best for you. And if you think you might want to move forward or back based on the features you're, you're surfing or playing in, don't glue it down. You can go ahead and, and adjust it. That's what I've been doing when I competed in the World Cup. 
uh, and it, when I was competing at Worlds in Nottingham, I had my seat in one place. When I was competing in the World Cup in Columbus, Georgia, I had my seat in a different place. No need to glue it down, and never did I glue my seat down. However, it's easy to glue down if you want. Now, those vertical side pieces, aha, that is what you attach your thigh braces to. So, this is your thigh brace, and look how it has a lot of contour. You can't put this much contour in a thermoform foam hip pad like you find with plastic boats. The, the plastic boat hip pads are stamped. They basically take a flat piece of foam, they glue cloth on it, and they take a press, a hot press, and they heat it and they press it down. And you can only start with a, a certain thickness and they press it. If you press it too much, it compresses and it just comes back out. By machining a, a piece of foam, you can get the exact shape you want and it can be as thick or big as you want. So these thigh braces are, or hip pads, sorry, are super stiff. Now check it out, I, I didn't even, uh, let me turn it around. I didn't even glue it in. I just stuck it under the, under the cockpit rim and on top of the seat, it integrates with the seat. So boom, it's in there. Now you can adjust that forward and back. You also, of course, have shims for those of you who are super skinny. No problem, there's four shims in here. Uh, anyway, we've got four shims, so you glue them on and you're good to go. If you find yourself too tight, you can either, you can sure form it. If you don't know what a sure form is, I should have one right here. It's one of those yellow things with a little scraper. Or take a piece of 80 grit sandpaper and you can shave this perfectly to fit you. I highly recommend you try it as it is. And if you feel any pressure points, generally speaking, move, this, move it back a little bit. Um, and if you still feel pressure points, you're usually going to shave upwards and give yourself a little more room at the top. So those are your hip pads. Okay, f the foot block. Foot blocks, to be honest with you, is kind of ghetto looking. This particular foot block that you're looking at isn't even symmetrical. Um, that's because the one I cut wasn't symmetrical. <laughs> the one you're going to get will be symmetrical. Don't worry about it. I just grabbed this one, wrong one, but anyway. Um, the foot block just goes in, in like this. You put your feet on it. If it's probably going to be too tight unless you're, unless you're, um, uh, unless you're super short. Uh, once you get in, uh, you can start cutting out and, and make it either des design it for shoes or no shoes. The key is whatever shoes you're going to wear when you're kayaking, those are the ones you want to cut to fit to. I highly recommend either using a hacksaw blade um, or use a serrated knife, but be careful, cut away from yourself. And then use either 80 grit sandpaper or sure form for final tweaking. So the, the reason the foot block is so big and such a big block of foam, most people will need it much smaller, is so that no matter what size you are, you can cut it to fit well for you. Now I would like to just ship a foot block that's perfectly designed for you, for your foot size and leg length, but honestly everybody, everybody's a little bit different, the way they fit in a boat, their size, the way they are, are comfortable, so it's better that you take the time to do that yourself. And if you have any questions, we'll be happy to, um, uh, happy to help you uh, do that when you get your boat. When I say that, I mean you can email me, eric at Apex Watercraft, um, and we'll, we'll walk you through it. This is your front wall. Now your front wall comes in, just bang it into place, kick it into place, boom, now you got a front wall. Now notice the front wall sticks out into the cockpit rim. If you aren't ever doing loops and you don't need a thruster or you're not using a happy seat, happy thruster um, combo for example, and with this seat you don't need a happy seat, and with this wall you don't need a, a happy thruster. I personally find this system a lot better because it's not intrusive, it not, doesn't make it harder to get out of the boat, and um, it's also easily removable. This block can be glued on top of here. If it's uh, more thruster than you want, same thing, and I do do this, you just cut these corners off and you round them and you make a nice round shape. Gives you a nice pretty round shape like you might be used to with a, thrust, with a happy thruster. And then bingo, you've got yourself a thruster. And then it's real easy to get the wall out. If you're not using a thruster, if you're just wave surfing, for example, um, wave surfing, you can go with either without the front wall um, or without the thruster. So you've got the accessories you need there. All right, now let's talk about the performance of this boat. We've, we've talked about the construction and outfitting. What is this boat designed to do? What is special about this boat? Um, well, number one, just because of the construction, this is an 18 pound medium boat, 18 pounds. Um, 
Weight has a huge, huge effect on performance. Weight determines how quickly you can rotate. Boom, boom, any direction. Every stroke affects it much greater. You get bigger air, it's easier to pop off the water. Just if you want to have an idea, it, this is 18 pounds and a, a, a normal medium is somewhere between 30 and 32 pounds depending on who's making it and what day they made it. Just take that uh, 12, whatever it is, 12, 13 pounds, take a 12 or 13 pound weight, put it in your current boat and see the difference. It's a big difference in performance. Okay, so that's weight. Now let's actually, what about the shape? The shape of this boat is designed for a variety of things. Number one, it's designed to win the world's in Columbus, Georgia next year. Super cool. <laughs> now what is Columbus, Georgia? It is a wave. So it's designed to be an epic wave boat. But it's also, it's a tough wave. It's tough to get off the water. It's, it's tough to time things. It needs to be easy, fast, retentive. It needs to pick off the water easy. Let's just start with that. So on the wave things. Shortness. This is the shortest medium boat that's ever been designed. This is 5'7". Um, it's at least an inch shorter than anything else out there. Shortness is all about swing weight. Have you ever seen a, an ice skater? They're, they're doing pirouettes. You just pull your arms in and they start spinning faster. It's the same thing with a kayak. Uh, the shorter it is, the less swing weight. The, the quicker you can get it rotating. When you start rotating quicker, you finish your moves quicker. You start a, a loop, the loop comes around quicker. You start a blunt, the blunt comes around quicker. So you get into landing position and finish position faster. When you combine the low weight and the shortness together, you complete your moves much quicker with less energy. You're more likely to stick the moves and you're more likely to stay on the feature. Some other things uh, about the shape. Um, this is a relatively large bow. This bow, even though it's short, is a huge looping bow. Um, the only, I don't know, I can, evidence of that other than, um, I don't know, world championships this year, after three hours I was winning the world's biggest loop competition. In the end I didn't win, some German dude beat me um, uh, with a much longer boat. But um, this boat loops absolutely huge. Uh, flat water cartwheels, there are boats that are easier to get the bow down, but this is really close. Um, this has much more volume in the bow, but yet because it's so short, it's still, um, you can still super clean it in flat water. And that's kind of like the, the critical point. If you can super clean in flat water, you've got a bow that's small enough. My goal was to have a bow big enough <clears throat> that, um, to provide huge air, but small enough that you could flat water clean if you're within the weight limit. Uh, the hull, I, I just already told you this is a very fast boat, um, even though it's short. We, um, we proved a long time ago, many years ago, back in the 2010 era, 2009 actually, that short is fast. Um, a lot of people think a boat needs to be long to be fast. It just has to have the right rocker profile. A um, couple of features on the bottom. You'll see the thruster chines um, go all the way from uh, where your butt is, all the way to the stern are fairly deep. These do two things. They really help you control, like in Columbus, Georgia, for example. You want to be able to close your eyes and be able to get back into a front surf and really control your boat just with your edges. Um, these features really help with that. They help you get back in a front surf. They actually drag your stern down slightly, and they also really help you control, but they also help you give cross-current speed. Um, the, the drop chine shape here, this is exactly the right height for looseness of the boat, but also to, for user friendliness. Um, drop chines that are too low are edgy. Drop chines that are too high aren't loose. So this is a perfect combo. Um, when it comes to carving, carving a lot of people think it's the chine itself. It's actually this cross section that determines how sharp this radius is, how long this area is, and how, how tall the boat is determine when you put it on edge, how quick it carves. This boat goes, it zips like crazy. It's unbelievable, 5.7. Cross current speed's amazing. Uh, we could talk all days about all the other tricks, McNasty's and lunar orbits and all that stuff. Um, if you notice the stern, very slicey stern. Um, I went pretty, pretty narrow and, and slicey in the stern for a variety of reasons. Uh, number one, if you're doing any, any moves, whether it be uh, flat water cartwheels, whether it be cartwheels, lunar orbits, tricky woos, any move that requires um, edge control, this edge slices in super easy, um, but it still gives you a lot of pop. There's a huge amount of volume here. 
Uh, really good wedge shape, so back loops and stuff like that, you have the benefit of the volume, but you also have the benefit of coming to a nice tight edge for sliciness. On a wave, of course, the slicier the stern is, the less, less is going through, the control is a lot quicker. Um, back band. The back band system, you've seen this before. Um, for those of you who like the back band with the, you know, the rope system, you're going to like this. For those of you who don't, you haven't really tried it lately. You need to get in the boat and try it. This system is instantly adjustable. It is secure. It is lightweight and it is strong. Um, because the, uh, in this particular case, the cleats I'm using are actually aluminum instead of plastic. They really hold like crazy, so they're a notch up from the plastic ones. So I think you're going to like that. Um, there's a really thick rope that the, that the back band rope goes through up here that's actually a, um, carbon fiber to the top of the, to the deck. And this is really far forward, which really allows you to pull the back band really tight if you want to. So I think you're going to enjoy this particular back band. Uh, Oh, a couple more things. So there's a lot of people ask, what is, what is this white stuff in the middle here? Those, um, is that some kind of support? No, those are graphics. <laughs> um, that's purely for aesthetics. I just wanted you to be able to look inside the boat and see something cool. So we got a cool just graphic that we designed to go in the inside of the boat. Um, you're going to have options of several colors. This is a full custom. Um, uh, this could be a standard or whatever, but it's not for this year. This is my personal boat. Um, the, the standard um, Apex colors are going to be a solid with one stripe up the middle. Um, you can make the deck and hull different colors. Um, they can be the same. You can have it all carbon fiber. Um, I'll provide you a full list of the colors that are available. We're doing three main colors on the way in um, that you'll get to choose from. So they're going to be pretty sweet. We're making them now. What else do we have for you? Well, this is medium. Next is going to be a small. Then it's going to be a large. Then it's going to be an extra large. And by the way, the ringer's on the way too. But this is the medium rebound. It will give you all the weight specs that you need. It'll be on apexwatercraft.com uh, for each of the sizes. And yes, eventually this will be available in plastic as well. But if you've never owned a carbon boat for $29.99 in the US, 2,500 euros in Europe. Woohoo! This is pretty sweet. Check it out.